that's the good stuff right here. Hard, soft literature. I mean, sort of, kind of. I tell you what, I think I'll think I'll check it out. You know, I'm not normally one to destroy books, but so I'm just kind of big for it. Hiya, folks! Fruit and Doggy here, and today I am for my book discussion. I am talking about the pet, and this is a horror book. It was writ published in 1986 by Charles L. Grant. And for the page link, it is just shy of 350 pages. <coughs> and as always, to start off, I'm going to read the summary of the book. Uh, the village of Ashford, New Jersey is about to discover terror. The Howler, a bloody killer who has already shredded 16s, is moving in. 17-year-old Don Boyd doesn't need the grief. He's already under siege. Jock trouble. <laughs> and I know what they mean, but... <coughs> excuse me. Seems like they could have come up with a better way to phrase that. Girl trouble. School trouble. Family trouble. Just trouble. <coughs> then one frosty autumn night, Don is jumped by the howler. Suddenly, they're surrounded by fog. Green fire... The sound of iron striking iron. And Ashford's real horror begins. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and I will admit, I kind of find it interesting that they actually call it the village of Ashford to describe a very small town. I guess that is the appropriate term. It just strikes me as kind of funny or interesting. <coughs> but anyways... Uh, this is a book, I've read this probably a couple of years ago, but I still remember the general gist and what I thought about it. <coughs> and when I looked it up just out of curiosity online after I read the book, uh, I found a list of top 100 horror stories. If I think to, I'll link that in the description below if I'm able to find it again. <coughs> but anyways... It listed the pet as one of the top 100 horror stories ever written. Which, admittedly, after I read this book, I found that to be quite surprising, to be entirely honest. <coughs> now, I will say the book was pretty decent to an extent. Uh, the protagonist, Don Boyd, he seems pretty believable. Typical teenager, a little bit of a geek... Not incredibly popular, having some problems with school, the, his household, the family dynamics. <coughs> he definitely has quite a few problems. And try not to give away too terrible much. Um, what's funny about the book is that the Howler, the basically serial killer who has been roaming around, they aren't really a threat in this book at all. Um, as the title suggests, the pet and the cover, if you're able to make it out, it is a black horse and it's a black cover, so it doesn't appear incredibly well in this recording. <coughs> but basically, the premise of the story, and this wouldn't be horrible spoilers, this is. I think fairly obvious and comes up pretty early in the book but <laughs> what winds up happening is this horse is basically a manifestation of Don himself it I think it came from a comic book as the original source and or maybe a poster even and with all these different stresses going on in his life, it uh, becomes overwhelming that he somehow has taps into his supernatural power and spawns in this horse. And as he's about to be offed by the killer, the horse comes in and saves his life. And I think the problem with this horror story 
is that it basically winds up straddling two different tropes. It deals with the main character <coughs> or uh, a prominent character in the story having the ability to either control or manifest sort of like a guardian or a champion on their behalf and he doesn't directly control it it sort of i guess follows his general whims his hormones his you know rampant feelings as they come and go <coughs> you have various impulses and then it also deals with the issue of an animal a creature or a beast that is going on a rampage but instead of really committing to one or the other it it kind of goes back and forth so for instance i've seen horror stories and plot lines that center around a savage beast you know a werewolf a genetic experiment that's been monkeying around that breaks free and starts going out going around uh, praying and stalking down people or on the other hand a story where <coughs> again the character is in control of some force and they're getting vengeance and they're picking off people one by one or going after small clusters and groups and then perhaps near the at the climax uh, maybe the force turns against them or they lose control or even you know they're trying to get revenge and then as the entity becomes more bloodthirsty or gains more power from killing people it starts getting out of hand but this one really straddles both and I think it loses effect in this by doing so because it's a creature that has some malevolent energies to it. it somewhat follows his whims as i said but then he also doesn't have strict direct control over it so it's just a murky in between and i think it loses a lot of impact that way and you're thinking well wait i could see this being effective and gripping because it's somewhat following his whims but then he can't stop it or control it but i don't know i and to an extent, to a certain point, it worked all right. But I think the other problem is the choice of animal, a horse. <coughs> I think part of the issue is that it's um, naturally a prey animal. And its only real way of uh, attacking people, it's not going to use claws, uh sharp fangs it really can just mow you down that's all it really is capable of <coughs> and i think that for most people in our society um unless you're actually facing a horse directly and you have some trepidation because they are such large creatures and you're afraid that they would attack you uh, i think most people have a lot of respect and fondness for horses uh, I think it's especially I mean it's prominent for both uh, men and women boys and girls uh, you know the cowboy imagery for young boys uh, you know the westerns and then for young ladies uh, kind of the princess romantic point of view the companion of a stalwart horse that they can rely upon and dote over I'm reminded of Black Beauty, for instance. <laughs> kind of an ironic contrast to this black horse. So, I mean, I can understand taking a positive image like that and then warping it and twisting it, but I think, I just don't think it really works well with horses. I've heard of, um, I think they're called nightmares, where they're like theoretically, uh, dream eaters tacking you in your dreams those sorts of foul spirits of horses but i think the only other type of mystical horse i can typically think of is either like a pegasus or a unicorn 
horses are just almost universally seen as an ally towards human beings i it's just very hard to go against that natural concept and again with the way that the horse is handled and how it attacks people you know attacking the victims as uh, all horror stories wind up doing it just i think it falls flat <coughs> excuse me and uh I've mentioned earlier the whole issue with spoilers. I think this would give away more for sure, but um, after the end, when the creature is addressed, it's dealt with, uh, kind of the resolution, the people who were sort of antagonizing the main character, who were uh, motivations, catalysts for the supernatural entity to come into existence in the first place at first you know they're shaken by the experience they're somewhat moved they're motivated to make life changes to you know reflect upon the way they've been acting up until that point and it's like hey maybe this is a good time to clean house and uh, make some amends and you know, just uh, make those improvements. That's a pretty powerful motivator at that. <clears throat> but shortly afterwards, they just slip right back where they were before. It goes back to the status quo just so fast. Now, I, I can understand that to an extent. I think there is a certain degree of humanity there where once the pressure's off and it's like, oh, I'm going to change, I'm going to change. You know, I'm so motivated and so compelled to change with you know the chainsaw it's like oh man it's about to come down on me and kill me it's like oh <laughs> the cop came in and shot the killer dead and now i don't have to worry about it yeah i'm not changing a thing <laughs> i mean i could understand that human nature aspect but i would think with how harrowing an experience these people faced especially since it has that supernatural flair it goes a little beyond you know a life or death experience a brush with death that's so that's easier to rationalize it's uh, more commonplace and understandable and relatable i would think you would be more moved by that kind of experience a, a brush with the supernatural something that's not normal not common and you get a second chance and other people didn't they died I, I don't know i just think that would be a bit more incentivizing <laughs> and then the ending it again it just kind of re it kind of reverted back to where it was at the beginning and it just came off as very weak to me i thought it was again quite flat rather disappointing and uninteresting <coughs> excuse me and that was uh this repeating but it was a disappointment because i thought the story was pretty good for quite a while it at least was entertaining it was your basic horror schlock and i will admit that upon uh reading this book and then seeing that list of top 100 horror stories and this made it I have to admit that sort of cooled my interest in the horror genre because I can't say I've uh, read horror stories compulsively I've not you know read probably more than a few dozen but it seems especially prone to tropes to uh, basic themes and patterns that it becomes a little it becomes very predictable what's going to happen i think with horror books especially <coughs> excuse me and i don't know they i just don't find it to be as compelling a genre as i once was sort of interested in but uh i don't know i think the premise was all right but i think it was flawed from the very beginning going with a horse as your main spookum i think you really have to take you have to put in some panache and flair you have to give it a lot of 
dynamism to really make that a compelling fearful entity you know give it you know the ability to speak perhaps you know that sort of sentience that it has a motivation uh, again you could kind of flip the whole horse human allyship on its hands I mean it'd be again cliche but the whole idea of a horse uprising because they're tired of being beneath man quite literally <coughs> bearing our weight and carrying us around and being our pack mules um and again, I think actually, uh, if you're going to make it supernatural anyway, going with either the Pegasus or the Unicorn route would be very intelligent to do because if it could fly, that would give it that uh, extra edge where it could swoop down because horses are already fast, but increase that speed even more. And then it can uh, be stealthy, have a element of surprise. And again, um, what would be dangerous about a horse would be its mass, its size, its uh, force of impact, crashing into you, crushing you, and the added element of flight would definitely aid in that. Uh, again, with the unicorn idea, that could be, I guess that would be the more directly gory way in some sense, with the stabbing potential, but... I think you'd really want to open up the element of magic in that case. Uh, give it some magical properties. And again, if, it, if it's going to be a horror aspect, you could go with it having dark magic and then maybe contrasting that with the fables or the legends and the myths about unicorns. How it, it's actually a very twisted reality or uh, maybe there's, again, evil unicorns. I don't know. I'm sort of thinking out loud ways to <coughs> add more interest to the general concept of using a horse as a uh, creature of fear. But those are just my basic ideas. If there's anything that you think would make horses that could give them more depth, more interest and in engagement as a a vehicle for that sort of story. I'd be kind of curious to hear what those would be. I suppose uh, underwater, that could be another angle to go about it. <coughs> kind of a more literal seahorse, if you will. But uh, overall, I guess I could see this being a harmless enough borrow territory. It's not that long. It was engaging up to a certain extent. Very stereotypical, though. I mean, when I say a geeky teenager with general school family problems, it just falls into stereotypes very cleanly. There's not a lot of surprises. There's not anything that goes outside of what your expectations would be. Gee, a bully teen who is so stressed out that they tap into a supernatural power to deal with all their different stressors and tormentors. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of fill in the gaps just from that, and you've got this book. So, I think I could probably safely put this into the burn it category, but if this is kind of a story I'm on that you haven't encountered yet, if this is something it's like, oh, I don't actually know what the tropes for that would be. I don't know what all the predictable results and the pathing would be for the story. Then, yeah, this wouldn't be a bad one to go with. It's, again, mostly harmless. But this isn't anything that would be very uh, exciting or otherwise engaging. So I'd, I'd pass. But anyways, that was my discussion on the pet. I don't know. If you had a completely different experience than I did, feel free to let me know. But otherwise, I hope you enjoy and have a good one, folks.